Tonight on River City Hardball, we talk strength training with Dr. Jacob Ivanich of Optimized Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. I'm your host, Andrew Gibson. Always great to have you with us. So, uh, first of all, how are you doing? Good, good to have you with us again. Yeah, everything's good, man. Uh, uh, always Wednesdays. Everything's crazy by this point of the week, but uh, another good week. And I'm, I'm, this is one topic I'm really excited about, really passionate about, and I think it's something that um, – we all have kind of general knowledge about it, but to really know how it fits into like baseball specifically um, isn't very well known. So let's get into it. Um, strength training, the importance of it uh, in season versus off season. Uh, tell us about it. Yeah. So in season, of course, you're not going to do as much. You're, you're playing your sport um, with strength training. It needs to be. So when I was growing up, um, and it's very similar now where you just think more is better with playing your sport all the time. But um, uh, it's if you are specializing in baseball, there needs to one of the first things with specializing is you do need it's kind of counterintuitive, but you need a certain time of the year where you're not playing your sport. Um, so you can kind of get, get away from it, train other things. So off season, there needs to be a period of time where the focus more is more on just general training not as much your sport, you can still do a little bit of skill training on the side to, to keep form and things like that. But the main focus needs to be for a certain period to get your body right and really train. And then as we get closer to the season, we gradually increase how sports specific we're getting. And then once you actually get to your preseason and season, that's when it's all on sport. What kind of strength training is important for baseball? Uh, yeah, so generally with baseball, you're thinking – um, you want to be very in, in every sport you want to be as sh relatively strong as possible um, so you think about baseball we, we we could go a lot of different ways with that question uh, it is a sport where you're not constantly running around you're kind of one position you need to explode and and do something for a couple seconds typically and then you're resting for a long period and it keeps keeps going in those cycles so we need to make sure we're really strong as strong as possible and we need to make sure we're as powerful and quick as possible and we don't have to worry as much about the endurance aspect because we're not constantly moving but we do need enough, enough of what we call like an endurance base where you can recover uh, enough to where you maintain that power and speed throughout uh, the, the, the competition. You know I would feel like uh, with a baseball player in particular the lower half has to be a a critical part of your strength training. I mean, you look at certain guys, just their lower half, John Carlos Stanton, you go back to the Jeff Bagwell yeah. had, I mean, he was basically doing squats yeah, yeah. in the batter's box. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was I would think that, right. I would think the lower half has to be a pretty important part of it, right? Oh, it's huge. Yeah. So that's where we generate all of our power through the ground up through the, the, either the ball or the bat when it comes through the, the arms. So yeah, lower half is huge, but it all plays together. So yeah, lower half is huge in generating the power. Core is huge in helping transmit that energy from your legs up to your arms um, and out, out whatever instrument you're using in the sport. Um, so the, the upper body, of course, needs to be strong too and be able to help uh, uh, transmit and also dissipate and slow down those uh, your limbs after you're performing that action. Uh, but yeah, you're 100% right. The legs are a huge, huge emphasis on, on the strength training. You know, speaking of emphasis, what uh, kind of importance do you place on, on just uh, the, the methods that you go about strength training? Because you have a lot of guys and, and girls softball players as well who come into the facility. What are you trying to teach them as far as good habits uh, and with, with strength training? Yeah, so, uh, of course, always looking at, at form first. So doing a lot of your general lifts. Um, so, you know, different kind of deadlift variations, different squat variations. Um, a lot of core variations also, along with, I always get everybody on a general arm care uh, program immediately also to make sure they're, they're keeping their uh, shoulder strong and, and healthy. Um, so a lot of it's form initially. And once we can get down those major lifts and really show that, you know, we can keep the form and we can kind of load up a little bit and, and still maintain that form. That's when over time we can get a little bit, uh, uh, start introducing tougher variations to it to keep stressing the body in different ways. So a lot of strength training and training in general, it is a lot of repetition over and over again, 
but we also need to introduce different variations of things to keep stressing the body in a little bit different ways. Cause if we just keep doing the same thing all the time, there is going to be kind of a plateau effect. So if we can keep introducing, even if it's, you know, you think about lunges, there's a regular lunge. You can do like a split squat. You can do a uh, reverse lunge, um, uh, a lunge with one, your, your rear foot elevated um, and, and do it that way. So all those variations do stress things in a little bit of a different way. Um, so that, that's how we kind of go about it. You know, form is such an important part of it too, because a lot of people, when they get in that weight room, they want to stack as much weight or lift as much weight as possible. And if you don't have the correct form, then it's not going to help you. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely. I mean, it'll help you because you'll get strong in some ways, but your injury risk increases, um, your training, you want to train your body as ideally as possible. So when you're out on the field, you'll be moving as ideal as possible. So if we're doing things like say, um, a lot of girls will have their, it's a common thing for their knee to kind of cave in when they're jumping or doing anything like that. So if we're doing our lunge training and that knee is constantly, you know, going inward, um, then when we're out on the field, that's going to transmit over too. And that's going to increase things like an ACL risk or what have you. So yeah, we want to train the most ideal patterns. So your body will subconsciously go to those patterns. Um, so we're being this, as safe as possible. And also when we're training those patterns, those are the, the, positions that will help you um, perform best because it will help, you know, transmit the forces the most ideally and things like that. Earlier, you mentioned core training. I feel like that may be something that people don't really think about, but it's an important part of it. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it is your stomach actually bracing. So it stays really uh, in a stiff position to allow those forces to generate from the lower body through the upper body. Um, so you'll get a lot of movement in the, um, you know, lower body and upper body, but that core needs to be really strong to stay stiff. So everything can kind of transmit through, but, um, especially for high school, I've said it before and it's true. It, it's the biggest cheat code. Cause a lot of people, uh, it, it's still not common knowledge that you need to really train for a, a good portion of your year to continuously get better over time. Um, so it really is a cheat code because not everybody is doing it. Yeah, no question about it. A few more minutes here with Dr. Jacob Ivanich from Optimize Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. All right, what are a few key things to remember for whatever athlete you're talking about, whether you're talking about a high school, college, maybe even some uh, professional athletes? We have some of those around Jacksonville. What are some key elements to remember, some key points to remember about strength training? I think the easiest way to kind of get across what I'm trying to, to – um, you know, to get out there is an analogy like the, my favorite one that I've seen is a glass. So if you have a big mug, the mug, if you put, if it's a big mug, you can fit a lot of water into it or whatever beverage you're going to be drinking. If you have a shot glass, there's not a whole lot of liquid that can get into that, that glass. So your strength is the mug. Um, so the more strength you have, um, the more liquid, the liquid would be, you know, power, agility, uh, your endurance. So the bigger, the, the more, the stronger you are, the more potential we have to get better in those other areas. If we're, if we're really weak, there's a really low ceiling for, for how much we can develop those other skills. So the idea with that off season training, like I was talking about is you get that strength really high. So, and we, and we di differentiate between people. So are some guys really strong and they don't really have the speed and power so in that case, their training pro program would be a little bit different than somebody who um, doesn't have much strength, but is maybe a little bit quicker. And then the emphasis would change, or maybe you're just lacking in both. So we need to do a decent amount of both. Um, so, but the stronger we get, then even as you get towards the season, and maybe you haven't been doing as much skill work as you, you know, think is ideal. Actually, when you start playing your sport, then you have a lot more potential to improve in those areas with how you're moving and performing. And some of that will continue to gradually uh, improve as the year goes on. And you'll probably be really shocked with how much your performance improves even within the season because you just have so much more potential too. your body has that potential. Um, also with conditioning, when you talk about getting into preseason and your regular season, like, um, I remember everybody was making a big deal about James Harden last year, not being in very good shape. And, uh, 
but they talk about guys playing playing their way into shape and that's because it's a lot easier to condition and have that that develop quickly power and strength do not develop quickly so that's why we need to develop or have at least a certain decent period of time during the year to build that because it does take a lot of time it doesn't happen quickly and playing is not training so when you're playing all the time, you're just not going to be able to build that as well as you would if you actually had a block of time to really focus on that. Yeah, and when we talk about uh, strength training uh, is in terms of in-season versus off-season, you know, I feel like in-season is more like maintenance type of training, and then off-season is when you really have to hit it hard, right? 100%, yeah. So you're going to be doing a couple of lifts during the week to, to maintain, but over time you think about – you're playing all the time. Yeah, you are lifting a little bit. So fatigue could become a factor a little bit too. And if you get fatigued, that's going to mask your performance. Um, so it all kind of plays together. But yeah, you're, the focus of your season is playing. So that's going to be the emphasis on everything to make sure you're performing on the field. So yeah, you're not killing yourself with, with training. You're just trying to relatively maintain. And mo- most people, uh, you will you know, detra- detrain a little bit throughout the year uh, just naturally. So that's why we need the off season to train back up to a level where each year we will keep getting better and better instead of detraining a little bit, just getting to the point where we were last year and then you're playing all the time. So we're not necessarily, you know, improving all those areas year after year. We're just kind of staying steady. The website is optimizedptsport.com. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, how are things going in the, in the facility uh, these days? It's good. I'm excited to get to this point of the year because this is, I love this, this part of it. Um, I'm just really trying to, to get that word out because I think it'll make a huge difference with baseball and softball and especially softball. Uh, you know, there are stereotypes out there. So with girls thinking that they can't lift heavy, uh, they'll get big, bulky, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't happen like that. So even softball players, it's very, very important to do this kind of stuff. And it would, make a huge, huge difference during their seasons. I'm glad you said that because that is kind of like a misconception, isn't it, that if, if girls lift heavy, then it's going to result in something that they may not necessarily want. I don't th- think that's necessarily the case, right? No, it's not. It depends how you train. So the way we train will transform your body in certain ways, but it takes years of training to get super big and bulky. Uh, so it doesn't happen overnight or in one off season or anything, anything like that. So uh, no, you, you look at all professional athletes and especially girls year after year, they're trying to get bigger, stronger. And um, yeah, the way you train is how it trans transforms your body. If you're a baseball or softball athlete here in the Jacksonville area, check them out. Uh, Optimized physical therapy and sports performance over there at DBAT uh, at the facility there. Uh, do yourself a favor in season, out of season. Uh, they're always open. Check them out over there. My friends Zach and, and all those guys do a terrific job along with Jacob. So uh, definitely do yourself a favor and go see those guys over at Optimized Physical Therapy, Sports Performance, and DBAT. Man, always great uh, visit with you, and we'll do it again next week. Sounds good, Gibby. Thank you.